Hey, it's Mike here, and today my response to steak and butter gal. Yeah, that's almost as bad as having like vegan in your handle. We're looking at her blood test results. Yes, this is another carnivore blood test result video, but there will be new stuff in the sense that we're looking at vegan versus her carnivore blood work, which is interesting. And her blood work is analyzed by a cardiologist. Yes, the same carnivore cardiologist that the carnivore couple referenced in the video I recently responded to. So yeah, this is another carnivore video. I'm not going insane looking at all these people eating all this meat. Let's go. Also really quickly want to mention that Lenny and I have had a lot of fun with the Dara scale by FitTrack looking at a bunch of advanced body metrics. So we're going to get into those scans in a little bit. Now as a vegan, is my bone mass okay? We'll find out. Let's keep going. So who is Steak and Butter Gal? Well, here is her channel. She has 180,000 subs and the video I'm responding to is this one with over 200,000 views. And it's weird how all of these carnivore bloodwork videos have this like really mellow, dramatic, sarcastic intro of like, oh my God, am I gonna die from heart disease? When you know they've already made up their mind. Here she is with hers. It is mind blowing. It's devastating. It's wow, I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Quit the carnivore diet. To nutshell it, Bella, which is her real name, says that she was vegan and then has actually been carnivore for five years. Though I will say I've noticed the definition of carnivore has expanded a little bit. It's not just straight steak and organ meats or whatever. They're also including just anything that is animal based. So, you know, here she is. I got to spend some time talking with Dr. Philip Ovedia. He is a board certified heart surgeon to actually show him my blood work. Yes, this is that same carny cardiologist that the carnivore couple mentions Dr. Ovedia and they said, you know, his LDL is between two and 300. And of course, we're gonna hear about why he doesn't care about that. But let's just hop right to some blood numbers and get to her total cholesterol. Here it is. My cholesterol really spiked up from 173 total cholesterol when I was vegan to a whopping 364 five total cholesterol when I became carnivore. Literally one point for every day of the year, it is so high. It is more than doubled since she was vegan, which is quite ridiculous. That to anyone is shocking. But I'm not anyone because the level of cholesterol in my blood is so exorbitantly high that it acts as an insulator preventing me from being shocked by electricity. It's also apparently an insulator from science. You are still believing that high total cholesterol, high LDL in your blood work is a big red flag. Or if your family is pressuring you, telling you these things and scaring you, Dr. Ovedia explains so well why the LDL is not what one should focus on. Your family might get a little bit worried when you have blasted through the cholesterol ceiling, not just blast, like eviscerated the ceiling and just replaced it with lipid based ceiling tiles. All right, now let's get to that LDL or bad cholesterol, which in my opinion is the most important. With that, your LDL cholesterol went from 81 to 264. Holy cripesies. Well, just to put that in perspective, how unusual that is from this American Heart Association paper that looked at the blood levels of 1.3 million people in the United States. She just blew past the 99th percentile for LDL in the US, which is 215. You know, she's almost a full 50 points past the 99th percentile. My whole LDL is 50. She's a whole me past the 99th percentile. But she says it's all okay because Dr. Ovedia said so. Dr. Ovedia reassured so plainly and simply that that total cholesterol is not a reliable, accurate marker of where your heart health condition is. LDL cholesterol is a very lousy predictor of heart disease risk. It's trying to be like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of cholesterol denial. LDL is not the cholesterol you're looking for. Not with you, the force is. And by force, I mean science. To be fair, he didn't talk about like LDL science in this particular video, but there's the longer interview where he elaborated a little bit more. Many people will have heard me and others talk about, you know, uh, the studies that have been done looking at patients coming into the hospital with a heart attack and that their LDL cholesterols 
are are basically not predictive. The, the concept here is that people who have lower cholesterol still end up having heart attacks from the data. Therefore, infinitely high cholesterol is fine. He still doesn't cite particular studies here, but that carnivore couple, which follows him, did cite this particular study to make that exact point. Was the conclusion that infinitely high LDL doesn't matter at all for heart disease? No, their conclusion was that the cutoff for low cholesterol actually needs to be lowered. First data that we had around LDL cholesterol really showed that it was only meaningful if it was exceptionally high. And what we think of as low, like around 100 or a little below 100, is still high enough to give atherosclerosis, which we've known from other studies like this one. You can see from this chart very clearly you can still get atherosclerosis at like 100. And credit to the commenters under my carnivore couple video, they mentioned a really good point that the level of cholesterol can actually appear lower than it likely was throughout somebody's life when they are admitted to the hospital for a heart attack because studies show that cholesterol levels lower after a heart attack like this study in particular, you might be knocking 10 to 20 points off, depending on when you take the measurement, which is huge. And I dug for more of Ovedia's arguments, found this article, an interview, where he does say that the size of your LDL particles matters, likely hearkening to the low carb mantra of large fluffy LDL being harmless. But again, to a study like this one, they are both horrible. One is just slightly less horrible for cardiovascular disease. And he says, lousy marker, is that really the case because people are using him here as a carnivore authority. They're appealing to authority here. He's the cardiologist. Well, how about a, another authority that's a little bit larger, the European Society of Cardiology, who has 100,000 medical professional members. They say that LDL is causal to atherosclerosis, artery disease. And I keep mentioning the European one. Well, how about one in the US, the American College of Cardiology, 50,000 members. Well, here, they say that, quote, the higher a person's LDL or bad cholesterol, the higher the chance of developing heart disease or having a heart attack or stroke. And of course, lowering it lowers the chance of atherosclerosis. So when we're gonna be appealing to authorities, what's better, one carnivore cardiologist or multiple societies of cardiology with 150,000 members total. And of course, that LDL causal claim is backed up by the best epidemiological evidence that we have, which is Mendelian or genetically randomized studies where people who have higher LDL cholesterol have more atherosclerosis. And that all lines up with, of course, how people on a low carb diet for meta-analysis after meta-analysis have about 30% increased all-cause mortality. All right, now for a quick break with today's sponsor, which is FitTrack, who makes this Dara scale, a smart scale that measures 17 different body metrics from muscle percentage and bone mass to visceral fat and your body water content which is really above and beyond what other smart scales do. So how does the technology actually work? Well, you put your bare feet on this and these leads put a weak electrical signal through your body. Electrical impedance is what it's called and it uses an algorithm to figure out your body composition. And one reviewer compared it to his DEXA scan, which is, you know, you go in a machine and you get scanned. One of those scans is significantly more expensive than the scale itself. And he found that the Dara scale was within about a 2% accuracy. So what are the results? Well, I hopped on this scale and at 181 pounds, it turns out I am in the higher bone mass tier, which is awesome. I got more bone. Other results I'm happy with, my visceral fat index was a seven, which is considered good. And then I also have the metabolic age of a 20 year old. Now, for someone that's 34 in a month, that is not too bad. And I will say, I think it's way better to focus on this variety of metrics when you're tracking your health, as opposed to like just looking at BMI or just looking at weight on a scale. And if you would like to try it, you can click the link below and use the code Mike, that's M-I-C, for 50% off your Dara scale by FitTrack. And that's the largest discount of the year. So go for it. All right. And of course, in the longer interview, Ovedia goes into remnant cholesterol. My carnivore couple video was essentially all about remnant cholesterol. They're trying to use lower remnant cholesterol as, again, an excuse for the super high LDL as if it magically cancels it out. You can watch that video for the full details, but to just hit on one of the points, this study is kind of a mirror to the study that they're using in that it looked at people admitted for you know, heart attack or stroke. And even people with lower remnant cholesterol, a ton of them were admitted as this chart shows. And that's probably because their LDL was still high enough to give them heart disease. And to be fair, it is the case that somebody with lower LDL can still have higher remnant cholesterol and that is a risk, 
but why not go lower on both, which I do not believe is possible on a carnivore diet, but is, you know, from my blood work, very doable on a vegan diet, thankfully. And I would also add that a carnivore diet doesn't guarantee low remnant cholesterol. Yeah, you're able to, you know, lower your triglycerides and stuff. In many cases, triglycerides go up like this guy on a carnivore diet at 261, which means his remnant cholesterol is over 50. This risk is well illustrated by this case study of two people, which also illustrates the danger of high LDL and artery clogging. Now, I've never mentioned this study before, but it did look at two healthy younger men. They were ages 33 and 28, and they had just exorbitantly high LDL cholesterol levels, like over 500. And they used carotid ultrasound to look at the thickness of the inner artery wall, which is, you know, a measure of atherosclerosis, and found that they were at the 97th and 90th percentiles for subject A and B which is obviously really high, and they conclude that this is suggesting early development of atherosclerosis. Depending on the study, that puts their artery level at like an average person twice their age at around 50 or 60. And that was just a year on the carnivore diet. It doesn't appear that these people were smoking, so that is wild. And they also came up with this chart showing these were lipid profile of these people. And it shows remnant cholesterol in terms of VLDL and IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein. It's not estimated, it's actually an advanced panel, unlike the remnant cholesterol estimates of these other carnivores. The bottom curve is sort of a control group, a pool of blood, just a blood pool. And then we have subject B and then finally subject A. And yeah, you can see that subject A over on the left side, their remnant cholesterol is high. Both of their LDL levels are high as well. And it follows, it's logical that subject A is the highest at 97 percentile of clogging who's then worse than subject B at 90th percentile of clogging, who is worse than that control pool of blood. Thankfully, these people weren't listening to Dr. Ovedia. They were smart enough to listen to the researchers, their doctors, and went off the carnivore diet, as they were told. And this brings me to a quick little tangent here, and that has to do with what low-carb people have coined as lean mass hyper-responders, which is these people that go on a low-carb diet, a keto diet, carnivore diet, and their LDL shoots through the roof. They're generally thinner people, and their theory on this is that because they don't have a bunch of fat on their body, and when they're going into ketosis, they're not making new fat and then burning that fat, or for whatever reason, their lean mass leads to a metabolic difference where they're relying heavily on LDL to transport their energy for their metabolism. But a lot of carnivore people are either hoping or just straight up already believe that this really high LDL level is just exempt from causing atherosclerosis, which in my opinion is delusional. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because they are gonna do a study that is one year long. However, it's in a bunch of young people and they're gonna probably be comparing it to the amount of artery clogging that happens in older people and that rate. You can see from this chart that younger people have a pretty slow increase in you know artery wall thickness. But then once you get up to 50 to 60, where most of these studies are on, you'll see rapid artery wall thickening so my fear with their study that they're gonna do is that they're going to just manipulate the data, game the data a little bit and say, hey, you know, we can just adjust it for age and do all this crazy stuff because there's such a big gap between you know, the younger carnivore people and the people who are normally in these studies and their rates of atherosclerosis. They're gonna be like, it's lower. So, you know, they're fine. So I just included this tangent to say, mark me, mark my words <laughs> for when the study comes out in a year or so. Now, and to look at some other blood markers, her total cholesterol to age LDL ratio got worse, they didn't mention that. By the way, back to the study I mentioned about LDL particle size and risk, total cholesterol to HDL ratio was actually most associated with cardiovascular disease of any metric at 2.8 times the risk for high versus low, pretty comparable to total LDL at 2.5 though. But then they talk about her triglycerides, which yeah, are at 15, which Dr. Avedia says is the lowest he's ever seen. You have the lowest triglyceride level, I believe Amazing. I've seen at 15. Uh, certainly, you know, probably some genetics and uh, everything else going on there. Which got me wondering, like, could this be too low? You should probably look into that. Either way, low triglycerides don't cancel out LDL, which again is causal to atherosclerosis. Now let's look at some vitamins, starting with vitamin B12. On her vegan diet, she was low. She wasn't technically below the cutoff for deficiency, way lower than all of these modern vegan studies, which makes me think that she, when she was vegan, she was doing vegan wrong. I know people are triggered 
weird with like, you did vegan wrong as a phrase because it's so oversimplified. But in this case, you know, we're having a blood measurement showing that she was doing it wrong. But again and again, these newer studies using quality measurements like methylmalonic acid at true B12 status, vegans are doing great. Looking to a recent study that looked at vegans out of Germany. I just did a video on those vegans were averaging around 400, trending higher than meat eaters. But I do think it was funny that she didn't include the normal ranges for these numbers because her B12 is now out of the normal range. It is too high, which is not a good thing. It's not a good thing because it can be associated with other issues. And it's also a little weird how, you know, even if she's eating two pounds of steak a day, which is like a carnivore classic amount to eat, that's only 18 micrograms per day of B12. Like she is really high based off how much she's eating, especially. And now we get to vitamin D, which I think is <laughs> where her video sort of went wrong in that like the last seven minutes, the vast majority of the video is just on basic vitamin D stuff. Her vitamin D was quite low on a vegan diet, still low on a non-vegan diet. You're someone else that may need to supplement uh, vitamin D. She even mentioned supplementing. So the dietary choices here are almost irrelevant, but I will say if this is something that scares people away from a vegan diet, looking again to that recent German study, the vegans actually trended higher in terms of their vitamin D level, you know, higher than the meat eaters, which I just wanted to add. But the point is she spends the vast majority of time talking about vitamin D when her cholesterol markers are, you know, the the most dangerous thing here, heart disease is our leading killer. And again, she just ignores that. And of course she's trying to post herself as like a good anecdote, you know, carnivore is great, do carnivore with me and blah, blah, blah. But I think we need to balance it out with anecdotes. And if you ever feel like doing that, feel free to check out the Instagram page, carnivore cringe, which goes on carnivore forums and finds all of the posts from people's, you know, nuclear biohazard toxic poops they're talking about and, and carnivore crotch, which is like a nasty smelly crotch, low libido, shrinking balls is actually on there, you know, and a whole list of other crazy problems. In the end, it's wild to just see a woman like steak and butter gal sit down with a doctor, a cardiologist, who's just telling her that everything looks great when, you know, the main <laughs> metric causal factor for heart disease is just through the roof, which again, all of the cardiology authorities with a net 150,000 health professionals as members say is something you wanna lower is causal to heart disease, which again is our leading killer. And yeah, these younger people, you know, our body is still spry and it has lower inflammation and we can deal with higher cholesterol without just dropping dead immediately. We can stave it off, but over time as these people age with the super high LDL level, it really concerns me. Again, that all cause mortality is higher. And of course these people are just having a massive carbon footprint and a massive animal footprint, which just from so many perspectives we need to stop. And once again, if you do want to try the Dara Scale by FitTrack, you can click the link below and use the code Mike, M-I-C, at checkout for 50% off this scale, which again is just way cheaper than getting a DEXA scan and you can just keep it in your home, which is sweet. And of course, let me know down below if there's anything I missed about Steak and Butter Gal's stories and her claims here. And as usual, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.